My love for the third generation Dodge Charger goes all the way back to watching 1970s NASCAR racing on TV as a child. Richard Petty, Buddy Baker, Marty Robbins, even Dale Earnhardt drove one. You could see them at drag strips. And one even raced at Le Mans. I just always thought it was a really cool looking car. I love the lines, the Coke bottle shape. first one in 1988 it was a 1973 rally edition charger it didn't take me too long to wreck it but it did take me a while to get over the loss after I got my license back my dad found this one not too long after that I moved to Georgia and left the car in Virginia with him he used it to chase down bank robbers once. I brought it down to Georgia in the mid 90s and when I bought a house I had to knock a wall out to get it to fit in the garage. It was looking pretty rough inside, time for a restoration. One day I decided to get to work. I started by putting it on jack stands, checking the brakes out, the tires, taking all the interior out, trim, seats, everything. There was nothing really majorly wrong with it other than sitting for 10 years. It had set for many years and you know what ethanol does to a fuel system so everything needed to be replaced. It also needed a new windshield and a headliner. I took out all the interior trim and either painted it or used vinyl dye. I was going to take the seats out, track and all, so I could get the carpet out. The nuts are underneath the car. Finally, I can get to all that missing change. One thing you'll need to notice when taking off the seat belts. The sensor attaches to a wire that runs right here. between the door seal and that stays hidden under the carpet there well we've pulled out the seat backs and as you can see there's some scarring and, and pitting in the surface of the seat back itself these are pretty deep and 33 years old <laughs> Um, after sanding on it for a little while, you can tell 
this one was a lot worse we've gotten a lot of those pits out and although it's still discolored the surface is a lot smoother than it was They didn't turn out perfect, but they look a lot better than they did, and it was a cheap fix. Here's a quick before shot of what my seats looked like. Off-white. Kind of dirty. Here's a one coat of a black dye. Back seat part A. Part B is over here. Not quite covered all the way, but like I said, it's one coat. The trunk floor concerned me at first, but turns out it wasn't rust on that after all. As you can see the windshield is out and we got lucky it's uh it's in good shape as far as rust goes there's very little it's not going to affect uh installation there and uh, the vinyl still in good shape some of the pins uh original pins 30 33 plus years old um, disintegrating so I need all new pins and uh, I'm going up to year one to get the pins uh, hopefully they got what we need then the glass goes right in this area has been cleaned out you know with the uh, lacquer thinner and everything new glass Interior, next project is the carpet. I wanted to get a look, make sure I document where everything's at. Seat belt. Bolt. And then right here. Just like that. Same way with this one, right there. We'll need to put those holes in for the seat and the sensor. Cut a little opening for that. These two supports and the shifter. And on the other side, we've got the same deal. Right there at the corner of the door is where the bolt that holds the seat belt goes in, and then almost uh, directly down from this support is where that hole is. Back here is uh, just over the sump, that's where the seat will meet. Leave a little bit of overhang here. It goes under the door sill on both sides. All right. The, uh, the dimmer that has a little grommet, little metal. I mean, a plastic washer that goes around it. So be careful cutting that open. All right. Now I'll we'll remove the carpet. I was amazed at how easy it came up and uh, how good it looks underneath. It's like new. But anyway, once you want to raise it up off the center console piece here on both sides, and it should slide right back. 
and uh, it all comes out. Try not to rip it. Some of it might be old. Mine's in pretty good shape here. This side will be a lot easier because you don't have the pedals to deal with, but once you get it past those, it's all smooth sailing. And voila, it's out. And floors look really good. Those mats even look almost new. Sound reduction, so. Place right there, it's stuck. Probably because of the heat. Otherwise, we look, we're looking good. We'll clean it up before we put the new carpet down and be good to go. Once you get the old carpet out, lay it out and let it reshape. You get an idea of, uh, you know, where you need uh, to cut the holes and stuff. And you're eventually going to use this as a template. So uh, save it. Bring the other one out. Set it over it. Things are starting to come together on the interior. I also installed the steering wheel from my first charger. I just like that look better. Then one cold night in February, it was time to try to start it up. Did you, did you, burn, did you drain your tank? Did you yeah, yeah. Put some dry gas in there just to see if there's any condensation to turn it out. It could also very well be the light is shining at that point where you can see it the light shining down on the other one. The car is up the block. It lives. You're right, you're right. You can actually see it. Come on, people will die too. It smells good. It smells like carbon monoxide. It's carbon monoxide. Yeah. It, it hasn't run this long. Big girl. It's, a, it's actually idling very good. It hasn't run this long. Hey, I don't think she likes that. <laughs> don't smack my ass unless you talk dirty to me first. There you go. <coughs> <laughs> See you next time. You got anything to eat in here? Pizza? For the next few days, I started it up daily and let it run for about half an hour just to get the juices flowing again. Put some good rust preventative primer on the trunk. Got a new air cleaner. So, uh, we're going down the road here. We're on, almost at the uh, Road Atlanta grounds here. We're just going down some country road. There's a gold pantry. Hey, hey. Copy. Smile. Uh, for the camera. Close up on Copy's eyeball. <laughs> Now that the interior was looking good, it was time to find out what kind of power I was putting down. That's the first time a laptop's ever been hooked up to my car. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't say that. <laughs> don't turn the machine, <laughs> Ooh, a little smoke there. How high'd you go? Uh, 4,800. That's high enough. <laughs> 194, 250 north. I was shooting for the 200 mark. 
close, man. Well, you can push it hard as you could, but you just push I mean, it. you got like 235. It's not bad, Gobby. It's good for an old car to be sitting in here. And, uh, what do you say? If I get more out of you, tricking it. What do you say, 250 <laughs> torque? 250 torque. Got a printout? That's cool. <laughs> you got a fucking hella flat torque curve. It's just 250 and stays. <laughs> okay. okay, lots of room for improvement there. Back then, if we weren't at the car show or the track, we were just on the street. Well, I'm filming right now, bro. Give us a peace sign or something. I can't believe it's May 2nd. Me and Cobby, me and the Cob Cobmeister are at the races. Well, we're sitting in line here. You can see there's a big heap of cars in front of us. I did a little better. Subaru and Alexis. Subaru got him on the truck, man.
like pace lapping it. I was doing a hundred when I went by here. <laughs> Fine. I just took my pregnant wife for a hot lap around road Atlanta in that car. So he's probably doing 90.